Next news is out of Northeast India. India braces for protests over citizenship bill excluding Muslims. Uh, Lawmakers approved the government's new citizenship bill, and protesters in northeast India have set fire to tires and cut down trees to block roads um, in a shutdown across the region hours after this happened. What this is going to do is the legislation will fast-track citizenship claims from refugees from three neighboring countries, but only if they are, are not Muslim. Um, so Islamic groups, the opposition, right groups, uh, and others said this fits into the Hindu nationalist agenda of the prime minister, um, that he wants to marginalize India's 200 million Muslims, uh, which is something that he denies. And, um, so I'm going to hand this over to Shubham actually to kind of give us some more insight on what's going on with this. Okay. So this is, this is kind of huge and I, I would say the hottest topic going on in India right now, the Citizenship Amendment Bill and also, which is very much connected to this, the National Register of Citizens. So how it began was like uh, uh, the BJP, their government, they wanted to implement or rather say impose the National Register of Citizens, which would like uh, consider who are the real citizens of the country. And I mean, there are quite a few illegal immigrants from countries like Bangladesh, Nepal and stuff, Myanmar and they wanted them to go away from India. They wanted them to, uh, to deport them from India. But then uh, the BGP what they saw is like many of these illegal immigrants, they are Hindus and they vote and a huge, a huge chunk of them actually vote for the BGP. BGP, so, by the way, people must know it's the right wing Hindu nationalist party in India, but go on, we should, they are in power. Yeah, yeah. it's basically a worse version of Republicans. Well, so, okay. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Let me know when I can yeah? jump in. Yeah, so, okay. So, when the BGP saw that uh, most and uh, many of these illegal immigrants actually vote for them, they decided, okay, let's keep the Hindus. Let's deport everyone else because they want the force mm. and what they're doing is like uh, the citizenship amendment bill it is saying that certain minorities it has a list of minorities in it mm. these minorities from countries like bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan they will be allowed to immigrate uh, to india and they will be provided with citizenship which is a problem because uh, first of all india is overpopulated mm. it doesn't have resources to feed its own people so there's no way it can support extra people then the bgp these nationalist parties they don't keep these immigrants in the mainland there's this land uh, joint land uh, the northeast india the states a uh, group of states uh, with like uh, they're not uh, they're kind of separated from India just a little bit of land is connected to the mainland and they dump these illegal immigrants and everyone else to that part and the people they are like you know what we are becoming a minority in our own state and I'm not usually for this minority stuff I don't think becoming a minority is necessarily bad unless Minorities are treated really harshly. Uh, well, okay. unless, it's done, uh, unless it's being engineered, right? So if, uh, yeah. if, if, you're, if you're turning to a minority in a country and it's happening organically, like for example, if, you know, uh, mixing of races, mixing of races in people a, intermarrying, natural, not forced immigration, that all of, if your if your race is becoming yeah. used to be a majority and is becoming a minority because of that, that's not that big of a deal. But if somebody is, if forcing move, you to become a minority, that's move, big deal. Moving ah. people around just to make sure that this demographic disappears from this part so that they could get votes and stuff, that is a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. So they the northeast people are like outrageous, yeah. outraged about that. And also the thing is like the. India, racism is a thing in India, okay. Uh, and when the Northeast people, they come to the mainland, or they meet uh, people from the mainland, they face racism. They face bigotry by the people. And the only place they can call home is their own states, right. group of states. So, 
if they become a minority in their own states they have nothing nowhere else to go they have nowhere else to be free of racism and stuff and that's why they are outraged over this bill and also currently the state the largest state in northeast india ashram it is it has an internet ban just just the same as kashmir what happened in kashmir wow they blocked the internet so that they cannot connect to the outside world i mean that's that's a great strategy like i think blocking communication in a war is like a great strategy yeah so they're doing Which that again shows how important it, like a lot of people are like oh twitter activism yeah. social media activism it's not going to do much well if it's not going to do much why is the state shutting down internet right like they see this as a threat information spreading about certain issues the government is the right wing you know the alt-right government of in india is seeing that as a threat that's why they shut down the internet every time they want to do something shady so f remember remember that whenever you think online activism is not going to do much uh, I'm, I'm just going to go f uh, through a few points here and then after i finish up I'm, can you correct correct me if i'm wrong about any of this right yes yeah, sure right? sure so the weird thing about this like so what what the what the right wing hindu nationalist party of india is claiming and instead of bgp i want to keep saying that right uh, right wing hindu nationalist because i want people to realize what we're talking about here for people that don't follow bgp stuff is that they're claiming that look this is a human humanitarian this is a human humanitarian thing right they re they want um they're looking for this they want people from around the world that are being discriminated again that they were being wrong to be able to claim citizenship in india right uh especially yes. especially the hindu and like well why why the why especially the hindus they're like well because hindu they say well because hindus are wronged in many places you know in pakistan because india india is the has the most hindu population yeah well, that's me, a huge thing no yeah but let me tell you yeah let, let me finish okay so and they're like, okay, but why does why do you have to discriminate based on religion? Why every Hindus and Buddhists can do this, but Muslim can't? Why can't you just be like based on people's need, right? Uh, if 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 they're being discriminated, like why are you, like the, the the reason why this is such a such an important thing is because this challenges the very definition of India. India is supposed to be a secular state, right? When, when after Gandhi, when when you had Pakistan separating from India, the main difference between Paki like India and Pakistan was Pakistan was slowly um, became a country that was ba that was established based on a religion. Originally, it wasn't so, but then it turned into a country that was based on Islam, right? India. The good thing about India is that India wanted to keep its secularism. But now you're defining, you're defining what it means to be an Indian. You could claim citizenship here as long as you're not a Muslim. You're defining the def you're def you're defining your citizenship based on religion. That is completely changing what it means to be an Indian, and that what def redefines India. That is the biggest challenge to India's secularism since its inception i think since its uh, independence yes this is a, yes this is this fundamentally changes the definition of india this is the pakistanization of india this is india turning into a hindu version of pakistan slowly and surely becoming more and more religious right and yes. from a government from from top down not even from bottom up right yes so, but but it, and one example that you could give to the uh, the these Hindu nationalists, right, is that what about the Rohingya migrants, right? They are they need you know they are Muslim. Yeah, I was I, I was just about to talk about them. Yeah, Rohingyas, the Uyghurs, the Ahmadiyya Muslims in Pakistan. Right, they are they are oppressed, right? These are Muslims that are oppressed. They're like, oh, we were focusing on you know we we don't we're not giving citizenship to Muslim because these people need help. We just gave you example of a whole bunch of Muslims, some of them who are stateless. In fact, they were <laughs> they should be at the front of the line, like the the Rohingyas from Burma. They, 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 they why are you not giving? Why are you focusing on Hindus? You know, them not doing anything at all would have been a better thing because you you are. By discriminating who gets a citizenship, you have to understand everything about what makes what made India better than Pakistan is being thrown out. Everything about what makes India better than Pakistan is being thrown out the window, right? Um, another thing is, in, so this is this is one pro 
the, the, the fact that they're not letting Rohingyas the, who are Muslim because they're Muslim to become citizen shows that this whole this claim that this is about humanitarian things. Oh, we're just trying to look after the people that need uh, asylum. All of that is absolute horse, you know what, you know, nonsense, right? But um, another thing is about not just Muslims outside of India that are not going to get any asylum because they're Muslim, but Muslims in India. So, so here's the thing. So if you are in India, um, if you are Hindu, you don't have to prove your citizenship because you're Hindu. You don't need any documents. You don't need any paperwork, right? But now that you, based on this new law, if you're not a Hindu, you can still bec- remain c- remain a citizen, but now you have to prove pa- you have to provide paperwork. You have to prove that you are you are you were always a citizen here, right? Yes. And the problem with this double standard is that a lot of poor Muslim Indians, citizen of India, they don't have any of that paperwork, right? So, Absolutely. But if the poor, like if you're poor and you're for Hindu, you don't need paperwork. Right, because you're Hindu. But if you're poor and you have you're Muslim and you don't have you don't you, you're living in the street, you don't have a file of like your birth certificate or anything like that. You don't have lawyers. You don't have anything. Now you're in India and you're technically you're stateless. There's no way you could prove that you're you, you're just you're living in a country that you cannot prove that you're a citizen of. You could just be kicked out. This is. This is so dangerous. Like people, people at home, like this, and the numbers that we're thinking, like people are like, oh yeah, India, just another country. No, we're talking about astronomical numbers here. Like when it comes to human rights violation, a whole, the, based on the passing of the laws, the number of people that just became stateless overnight living in India, potentially stateless overnight, we're talking about like, it, it, millions. It, yeah, we're talking millions. Yeah, millions. Like if this was other countries, we would be talking about a whole population of of entire countries becoming stateless overnight like the how big of a human rights issue this is it, it gets lost to people because they think like oh yeah india another country no this is not this is not just another country like it, you know when people are like oh talking about oh how muslims are being treated bad cheated badly in europe or uh, in united states and you know those things should be you know you need attention to that but but you don't look at india like there are way more Muslims here that are being mistreated, like in China and India. And the, so, the so-called guardians of Muslims that these whole like left-wing people are like, oh, poor Muslims, they never care about this, even though the numbers are so much more. Like, this is this should be on top of every news. Like, this should be headline news everywhere. Imagine, like in Europe, a whole bunch of Muslims in Europe that were sitting, like imagine Muslims in UK, right? Like a fraction of the Muslims in UK, right? Just that were citizens of UK. The, the United Kingdom passed a law tomorrow, tomorrow that they didn't know. Tom- they woke up tomorrow. They're like, we had citizenship of UK yesterday, but now we don't know. We might not sit- have sit- like this. You know, the inter- international outrage, even if it was like just five of them, even if it was just one of them, just one, one Muslim citizen of United Kingdom, if they lost their citizenship because they were Muslim, people were like, what the hell is going on? The poor Muslims. But if you have mo- millions of them in India losing citizenship overnight, then they don't know if they have a state anymore or not. People are like, yeah, oh, it's India, whatever. So, but go on. You need to say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. First, uh, what you said, the India being better from Pakistan and all of those reasons are being thrown out. These exact points have been put out by the opposition party, the left left wing party mm-hmm. in India. They're saying, okay, you know what? The right wing hates Jinnah because he wanted to establish Pakistan as a separate country for Muslims. But what they're doing right now is exactly doing what Jinnah wanted, right. separating the Muslims. <laughs> Okay, and also, I mean, secularism is right out of the window. Yeah. India is not secular anymore. I mean, it is in the papers, but yeah, that's true. Also, I mean, like I said, uh, minorities, like Muslim minorities, Rohingyas, Uyghurs, Ahmadiyas, they are not welcome. Also, they, uh, among other minorities, the Tamils from Sri Lanka, hmm. atheists, they are also not welcome. Wow, really? Yeah, so they have... It's not like they have mentioned you know, Muslims are not welcome. They have mentioned these minorities are only welcome. So here's the interesting thing. 
Okay, so I'm gonna call out the Muslims in India a little bit, right? See, like we're atheists here, right? All three of us are atheists here, and we are calling we're calling this out uh, as nonsense, right? For even though we are anti-Islam and we hate Islam and we want to end Islam and we think Islam is a disease that needs to needs to die yesterday, uh, we're so we're still defending you as Muslims, your rights as Muslims, right? But how many Muslims would come and defend atheists? I am hoping, you know, I, I know that it's not that many. If if in India, if, if the government of India said like, oh, atheists, they have to, there's a double standard against atheists in India, right? Would these Muslims in India come out and say like, oh, these poor atheists, let's defend their rights? Probably not, right? But we don't wait for people to defend us for us to come and defend them, defend their rights, because we're going to be consistent when it comes to you know, we don't, we don't make that a condition. We don't make it a condition that you have to defend us for us to return their favor. No, we defend human rights across the board, even for people that want to take our rights away from us, right? Because that's how it's done. And another point, another point that I want to make is, you know, the, the alt-right that people need to be afraid of right now, you know, so the alt-right, oh yeah, the alt-right is rising in... Europe and in North America. Yeah, okay, sure, from one person to two person, right? But the alt the rise of the alt-right that you actually have to be afraid of that is astronomically higher than any concern that you might have for the alt than the alt-right in you know in the west is the alt-right in India. Is the Hindu alt-right in India? That is going to impact way way more people and it's a much major more concern on a global scale than any of that. So if you have if you have spent some time on Twitter or on YouTube or on Facebook talking about, oh, like the alt-right, oh my God, these neo-Nazi people, well, please, please, okay, do that. That's good. Please, please bring attention to that because those people are bad and that needs attention. But please spend a little bit of time. You know, if you care about minority, please bring it a little bit of attention to the rise of the alt-right and the impact that it is having on the Muslim community in India. Please do that as well, right? Please be consistent when it comes to the values that you're trying to uphold. Another thing, I w last point I want to make is the interesting thing is that a lot of uh, white, e you know, ethno uh, nationalists or white supremacists, and I understand those are two different groups, but both of them, they're like, oh, we're being socially engineered, like people are like the, the end of the white race, they're trying to move us around, right? Um, so there's a lot of alt-right people that think that there's this global uh, Jewish conspiracy to get rid of the white race and, you know, end them because of feminism or race mixing or abortion and all that and gay marriage and all of so that stuff that and immi forced immigration to get rid of the white race, right? But the interesting thing is that the actual, the actual demographic change that is happening, the forced engineering our demographics is happening by alt-right groups not by by any far left or by any Zionist groups, right? The actual social engineering, engineering of, the, of demographics is happening in India by alt-right. And here's the thing, it's actually happening by an atheist government in China, right? So it's not happening by any, um, you know, Zionist conspiracies or anything like that. But this, these are the real social, you know, demographics, the, the for, force engineering. And, and another place that is happening is by Turkey in northern Syria. These are the real cases. So the, the conspiracy, the fake social engineering that the white nationalists point to is by Zionists in Europe and North America. Those are happening naturally. Nobody is forcing that, right? But the real ones are by Turkey in northern Syria, by by China, um, in Xinjiang, is that how you say it? And by India, in Kashmir, and apparently now in everywhere else in India. Um, I'm gonna- Yes, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so, no, I wanted to say a few things more. Like, in the West, like you said, if like, even one Muslim was like, treated harshly, it would have been global news next day. Right. In India, has, is not even a Muslim country and it has the third largest Muslim population in the world and all of them are being discriminated against and no one's batting an eye. That's like what I want to say about it. And also like uh, about this thing, uh, Northeast, in the North 
what's happening in the north is like i said uh, the internet has been blocked and the prime minister modi took on to twitter and tweeted that oh don't worry my fellow northeast people your rights will be ensured and you know what the northeast people cannot see that they cannot see that tweet and even people have come out and said like what the, who the fuck are you talking to because no one can see your tweet okay guys this is just this tweeting swear, because youtube really destroys our youtube oh, right. if you swear like okay me. okay so because because like uh, you know like he's he's just trying to say i mean uh, the right wing the right, uh, conservatives in india like oh see modi is tweeting for them he doesn't want them to be uh, marginalized and stuff and everything but like then why block the internet and right why even pretend like say uh, he's caring about them while blocking the internet no one's hearing him um, uh, yeah so the, the, i'm going to read the top comment because it's making me really angry Pe- the top comment is by penny gb so he's a top fan of atheist republic he or she has the top mm, fan uh, you know badge or whatever uh you say the top comment says good Ex- penny saying good exclude them for from everything nothing goods from them so she's talking about muslims so she's penny is this is penny's comment about muslims good exclude them from everything nothing good co- comes from them this is such a dangerous you know the, wait um Shabam, can you mute your microphone uh, yeah. so this is this way of thinking is so dangerous right i am against this way of thinking for all the reasons i'm against islam like if you want to replace islam which is a very is a dangerous disease that needs to die if you want to replace that with this way of thinking that that with with the idea uh, with an ideology that is in favor of excluding an entire group of people because of the way they think from society and thinking that nothing good comes comes from them then you're just replacing one disease with another a potentially bigger disease than islam i would say this is a potentially bigger disease than islam what penny is suggesting right i would i would fight the disease that penny is spreading as strongly or even great you know more than uh, i fight islam right this is this is this i'm i'm not trying to be hyperbolic but this is extremely dangerous way of thinking extremely dangerous way of thinking and i don't care that penny is a top fan of atheist republic we don't ban these people from atheist republic because we want to highlight them because this is a problem within our own community that needs to be highlighted and needs to be called out for i want people like penny to come and tell us how dangerous they are so that atheists are not deluded that oh we're all atheists oh we're so good we're all humanists we're all like bright and you know we're all um more sophisticated more moral no we have this cancer in our own community in our own atheist, not in, not just in the atheist community in our own atheist republic community we have this cancer and we don't we don't shy away from highlighting it we'll look at we look at the sickness that we have in our own community we highlight it and we call it out um did you guys want to add anything uh no not not about this not anymore i mean okay bring your bring your like hint, like we're gonna have like a whole bunch of hindus coming out and in the comment section we're like oh fake news oh armin why are you talking about something that you have no idea? go educate so go do some research oh this is western media fake news fake news oh you have no idea uh what you talk about all those comments leave them please in the comment section you know you know you know i mean uh, like before the elections were this year in india right so just before the elections hmm. i was like they're asking people to vote if they can they vote against the bjp because it will be really bad and they were like oh no the bjp is our best option at it and bjp is going to do good they're the only option to save the economy the only option to save the people and after they got voted and Oh. every kind of shit started happening in the country okay don't say that, don't, don't swear seriously like youtube will yeah, continue I, to <laughs> remove our content but uh, <sighs> but let me let me just tell you actually this is a very good point because um this is you, economically um you know 
a lot of Modi's, you know, a lot of the, you know, right-wing nationalist prom parties' promises, the BG promises, are not coming true, right? So this is another way of uh, just throwing meat at these all these, you know, uh, right-wing Hindu people in India to get them something to be happy. Like this is this works. They're smart about this, right? This gets them votes. Like this, there's a demand for laws like this against Muslims in India, right? And because they're not giving, they're not fulfilling the promises that they made about the economy to the Indian people. This is how you get get votes from the people because you know that people are not, you're not going to be as popular. You know, like uh, the the part in the last election, uh, the, it looked like they're going to lose a lot of power because of not not being able to give all the economic promises. And they had like, hey, war with Pakistan, like, hey, get the shut, you know, the pilots and everything. And all of a sudden they got more seats, like it works, right? So this, this again will work. This is something that as a, is a reaction to not being able to fulfill all the economic promises that they made because, you know, people, people want like the, the Hindus in India, they want this. They want this and this is going to set this, this is going to make them be even more loyal to the BGP party. Right. Yeah, and they also needed another excuse. Like after the Ayodhya battle, the Ram Temple thing got settled. They didn't have any promises about religious to right. for the next elections, and they needed something else, mm. and they just got something else. They got the biggest prize ever. Like the the whole. This is exactly what the right wing wants in Israel. This is this is what the, this is they get the Hindus the Hindu nationalists they get wet for this dream. Of a Hindu nation, I I get so amazed how similar right wing religious people in Israel and right wing religious people in India are similar because you're wor you're working with two religions that are based on ethnicity. I call them ethno religions, right? Judaism and Hinduism are ethno religions, right? And both the right wing religious people in Israel and right wing religious people in India are trying to add a new defi definition to the citizenship, right? So the definitions of these religions, like Hinduism, used before both Hinduism and Judaism, used all th used to be three different things. Both for Hinduism and uh, Judaism, right? Uh, it used to be a religious thing, like. Uh, it used to be an uh, ethnic thing, what, what it means to be a Jew. So that's a separate definition from the religion. It's an ethnic thing, separate from, and it's a cultural thing. Right? So being a Hindu or being a Jew could be based on your religion or based on your ethnicity or based on your culture. It could be an atheist that is culturally Jewish. But now what the right wing ethno-nationalists in India and in, Ju in Israel are trying to do is they're both trying to add a fourth definition, a fourth new definition that is your citizenship. It's a citizenship definition. So for you to be a citizen of Israel, you need to be a Jew. So if, even if you don't have a Jewish citizenship, if you're a Jew, if you could prove you're a Jew, you could be a citizen of Israel. And if you're a citizen of Israel, but you're not Jewish, your citizenship is being questioned by orthodox jewish people and india exact same thing this fourth definition of defining citizenship based on um, religion which is very dangerous and this is what white white ethno-nationalists wish they had because they white ethno-nationalists they don't have an ethno-religion christianity is not an ethno-religion islam is not an ethno-religion they wish so, the white ethno-nationalists, they wish they it was. Sometimes they try to pretend that it is, right? And the, 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 the white ethno-nationalists that don't have, they don't see Christianity as an ethno-religion. They try to go to ancient Viking uh, symbol, uh, you know, symbolism and um, ideologies because they see that as like Viking and North mythology as pure white religions. So that's what they're trying to appeal to because they don't have a religion that backs their ethnicity the way Hinduism and Judaism does. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I mean, also also another thing, like you were saying how Muslims and uh, if you're not a Hindu, you need to prove your citizenship, right? And poor people cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of days ago, there was a case in Northern Bengal but in my state. You, the, you got yeah. Here. Okay, no, I mean, I mean, it is kind of related. So, but we like, need to go. There was to... this, there was this poor guy. He oh. couldn't find his citizenship. Uh, I mean, proofs, the documents he needed, and oh. he had to commit suicide because of that. 
Wow. Okay, let's cover that at a later day. That sounds intense. Okay, but Ali is right. I thank you, Ali, because we yeah. need to feel like that. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.